Hey everybody, this is Joe slash Foozle, and today I'm going to be covering a pretty common problem inside of game development, which is enemy separation. At a super high level, I'm going to cover a handful of different approaches, and I'm going to narrow in on the one that I used inside of my game, which is what you see behind me, and then I'll also give a really simple example about how you can do this with just a few lines of code and get pretty decent results. So let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're going to start our discussion on Boyds. Now, Boyds is a really, really cool thing, especially if you need to do a flocking simulation. But part of Boyds is the element of separation. It also has cohesion and alignment and a few other things, but separation is a big piece of it. And this is an example by The Coding Train, which is an awesome YouTube channel. Definitely go subscribe. I'll link it down in the description. And he has an awesome YouTube series that goes over some of these elements, including separation and Boyds. So when you look at here and you look at the code, you can tell that it kind of boils down to a couple things. One is this perception radius, which is how far around my actor uh, or my Boyd am I going to consider other Boyds and other actors to be influenced by. And then I'm going to use uh, that perception radius. I'm going to use the distance between each of those Boyds and each of those uh, enemies to influence my steering behavior. And I'm not going to get into the specifics of this, but that's the general idea. It's like, hey, I'm going to define a radius. I'm going to collect all the voids around it, and I'm going to come up with an equation based off of the distance that influences my steering. I'm also going to consider all these other factors like cohesion and alignment, which I'm not going to cover in this discussion, but voids are something you should be aware of. And if this is something that you want to put inside of your own game, it can make some really, really, really cool enemy movement patterns. It also takes a little bit more CPU when you include all the other things like alignment and cohesion. But I mean, look at the example behind me. I mean, this is super cool. And you can play with these factors and make all sorts of different types of enemy movement patterns. So definitely consider it. I don't want to leave voids out of the discussion. Okay, I'm gonna move on to number two. Okay, well, luck would have it that number two is actually my game. So in my game, I use something that I refer to as repulsion. And let's go ahead and spawn 50 enemies here. And ooh, that looked nice. Let's do that again. Ah, oh, man, I love it. And I'm pretty biased because it's my game. Um, my game, by the way, is meant to become a twin stick survivor where it's going to have elements of Empire Survivor and there's going to be power ups that you can grab and all sorts of enemies and you're going to do more and more damage. So it's going to be awesome. But let's talk about separation because that's the focus of this video. When you do repulsion, it's very similar to Boyd's, which is why we started there. Repulsion is like a magnetic force. Repulsion is going to take into consideration a certain amount of actors around your enemy around your enemy using like hey grab all the enemies within some distance and it's going to calculate a force that is based on the distance and using that force it's going to come up with a repulsion value that you can separate into an x and y vector component. So let's go and see what this looks like inside of my game real quick. Okay, so here is the heart of the repulsion calculation going on inside of my game. What it's doing is it's looping through each of the actors or the enemies, and I'm first performing a search to grab all my nearby actors. I'm using Arbush inside my game, which is a high performance JavaScript library for 2D spatial indexing. I mean, basically it's really good at letting me put in like a square and grabbing all the other squares that overlap with that square. So you can use it for collision detection. And in my case, I'm using it to grab all my nearby enemies as efficiently as I can. So now I have my list of other actors in the, in the area. I'm going to go through each of those actors. I'm going to get my distance and I'm going to calculate my repulsion force. And when you look at how I'm calculating my repulsion force, effectively what that is, is it's getting my distance and then I'm applying a uh, force magnitude, which is a K factor divided by my distance squared. So you can use your own K factor and you can play with this. For me, I arbitrarily have it set to 10,000 right now. And that returns a X and Y component of that force magnitude. So I have my repulsion now that I can sum up across all the other actors that are nearby and I get my repulsion X and my repulsion Y. Now, this is where I wanna pause for a second. Notice how when we did the Boyds, we didn't really talk about, well, what's its heuristic? What's its goal? Like, how does it know how to get to the player? In this example, it doesn't have that. It's not trying to get to a player. So in order to try to influence the repulsion while still allowing your enemy to move towards your player, you're going to have to combine repulsion with something. Otherwise, it's just going to spread into a circle and not move anywhere else. So you need to combine that vector X and vector Y that you get with something else. And how do we get that something else? Well, let's keep going. 
Okay, so that takes me to this fantastic resource, which I've been linked before. I'm gonna put it in the description. And this gives you a bunch of great visuals to understanding pathfinding solutions. You're going to need some sort of pathfinding solution to combine with spreading out your characters and separation. Otherwise, they're just gonna spread out and not go anywhere. So you need to know at least that you're gonna to have to combine it with some sort of pathfinding solution. For me, I use this breadth first search implementation, which is also referred to as a flood fill. And ultimately the algorithm goes outward from the player and it fills in information in each of the cells. And I can get this grid of angles that the enemy should be moving. If I'm standing on this cell, I know I need to go this way to get to the player. So that's how I do it because it's actually way more efficient to just store one array or one map of cells for me and have each of the enemies leverage that information rather than having every single enemy doing its own pathfinding uh, call to get to the player. So that's how I decided to implement it and it works really good for me. Now, when I say combine, how do you combine it? Well, do you just add the vectors together and then normalize it? Well, you, you could. How I decided to do it was at a high level, the further away you are from the player, the more that you allow the repulsion to take effect, to allow it to spread out. The closer you are to the player, then the you know the repulsion effect becomes less and less and just getting to the player is more important. So that's how I did it, but you might decide to just make it really simple, add the two together and normalize it. So we've explored voids and we've explored repulsion, which is basically like magnets. And it's very similar to the separation inside of voids. What are some other things that you can do? Won't spend too much time on this, but here's an interesting idea. It's, it's sometimes referred to as potential fields, where effectively you create a map of your environment, just like I did, where I had the flood fill and I filled it in with angles, but instead you basically have a level of intensity or energy that you fill in for each cell. And that's determined based off of, hey, if I have more players here, then it's a higher intensity, or if I have obstacles here, it's a higher intensity. And what you're trying to do, and I'm just gonna zoom on down because this is a very simplistic table, is you're trying to figure out, well, how do I spread out from higher intensity levels to lower intensity levels? So it's still a cell-based approach, and you basically look at each of your neighbors and you say, hey, this is the lowest energy cell, I'm gonna go that way, um, or I'm gonna make that my influencing factor. And you maintain that map for your environment, and you look at each of your neighbors around you, and you go towards the one with the lowest energy. And that's it. So you have an update loop where you're updating your energy and then you have each of your enemy actors looking at that cell. Hey, I'm standing on this one. I'm going to go to this one now because this is the lowest. I'm going to head in that direction. I'm going to go and be in a lower state of energy. So that's potential fields at a super high level. Okay, let's talk about another creative way that you might decide to approach separation. Um, this is a very famous uh, implementation of cellular automata, which is the game of life. Right, so in here you can go ahead and see how a set of rules results in very interesting emerging behavior. And in this one, you're creating and destroying things, but you can take the same sort of approach to, um, to actually create rules about movement. So rather than it being created and destroying, you can create a very simple set of rules that define your neighbors and say, hey, I have neighbors all over here, I'm gonna go this way. So you can use another cell-based solution with simple rules around your neighbors to come up with emergent behavior for pathfinding that, uh, that you can overlay with pathfinding to try to do some separation. So this is another interesting idea. Okay, so now for my final and quick and dirty solution, which I highly recommend if you just need something to, to work and you don't wanna try implementing all that other crazy stuff. So let's go ahead and give this a play. All right, so if I move around and I click, it spawns 10 enemies and they try to get to me. And you know what? That looks okay. They spread out. They're not totally all on top of each other and I can get them to spread out even more by uh, adjusting something. So let's go ahead and look at how this is done. That's it. <laughs> Very simple. This is done in Construct 3. Uh, you can do this in any engine though. So all I'm doing is you know, not necessarily every tick. I think it looks better when it's spread out like every 0.25 seconds. Loop through each of your enemies get the distance between your enemy and your player. I have a spread factor, which is based off of how far away from the player you are. So it ranges from one to some multiple, maybe three, four, if you're really far away. And then I'm using a move to inside of Construct 3, which is really just go from here to there. You can also use pathfinding to this point, but ultimately all I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, go to a random spot around the player. 
or the point that you're trying to get to. That's it. And that random point gets bigger, if it, a bigger spread if you're farther away, and it gets narrower if you're close. And that is all you have to do, and it will actually create some decent behavior that looks like, like a horde running towards you, and it doesn't look so just smooth and them all clumping up on top of each other. There's my little tip and trick if you want something quick and dirty and you don't want to implement all that other crap. Okay, everybody. Well, that was my video on how to do enemy separation. Uh, there are quite a few different tricks out there, but you know what? Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out in my own game. The repulsion method works great for me. I overlay it with flood fill so that they know how to get to me, and I'm really happy with uh, how this is turning out. So this thing works great if you have lots and lots and lots of enemies. So using flood fill, which is that breadth first search algorithm combined with repulsion, big thumbs up. But I don't want to discount the other things. Boyd's looks really, really cool. It's more CPU intensive. I didn't need some of the other elements of it, but it's awesome. If you want to do something more interesting with potential fields, I, I think that could be a really cool approach. Um, you can also go and do something interesting with cellular automa automata. Uh, and then you can also do some really simple hacky rules that also can look pretty good. Simple can be awesome, and I don't want to discount that. Mine is a little bit more complicated, but I enjoyed making it, and I think it turned out great. So if you need something simple, start with the hack I showed you at the very end of the video. If you want to try something a little bit more complex, think about voids, think about repulsion, think about potential fields, maybe think about some sort of cellular solution where you break up the problem and you set some rules around it. So with that said, everybody, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up. It's free for you to do and it makes a big difference to me. And good luck in making games. Bye.